So you would start with the definitions. Those are on page five at 36, 3601. You know, do I have proof? Is my client making allegations? Or if you're defending, do they, do their allegations uh, rise to the level that they meet the criteria listed in these definitions? And I think the, if you're defending, you know, that can be hard because this isn't a situation most of the time where you've had discovery. You're literally in a trial by ambush situation where you're going in and you might not know all of the proof they have. So then what are you looking for? You're looking for what I was talking about earlier. You're looking to make objections that they failed to make a prima facie case because whatever you've been provided a copy of in the petition does not contain allegations that rise to uh, that level. And, and usually a good indicator is if you see someone who couldn't get the ex parte order, it's probably because the um, whoever, whether it was a judge or, or um, magistrate or whoever was looking at the petition that they did not see a prima facie case being made or they would have issued the ex parte. Um, because I do think ex parte orders of protection can be a lot like an indictment and there's that saying, you know, and this is no offense to prosecutors, but there's that saying that you could indict a ham sandwich, but that doesn't mean you can convict them. So you can get an ex parte order of protection, um, I think, frighteningly easily uh, sometimes, but if they didn't even get the ex parte, that can be a good indicator that the petition doesn't have uh, what it needed in order to satisfy the criteria. And I've had cases like that uh, where they, it, well, I won't even get into the details, but I mean, I think that's your first, you know, signal, hey, if they didn't get the ex parte, why wasn't it issued? And what objections can I make before we even get into the proof? Because if they failed to make a prima facie case with this petition, we're done. Um, and then I'm going to ask that the petition you know, be dismissed. And then it's, you know, whether or not the person's quick enough to amend or file another one or whatever else they're going to do. Um, How, so what proof do you need is anything that proves those allegations and then remembering that you have you start out with one standard or I'm sorry you're starting out with a uh, preponderance of the evidence standard and, and going back to what I was saying earlier that's why I was bringing up the fact that they have a different standard than you so when the criminal defense attorney starts letting you know they've got you covered and you don't need to get the order of protection against their client um, that's probably the kindest way to end, end that conversation is just to say that's great I really appreciate it but I don't have a beyond a reasonable doubt standard and, and that's what you have or uh, the prosecutor has against you so we're going to go ahead and safeguard our client with this um, preponderance of the evidence um, ex parte or whatever you know if you're adjudicating it's different